on this Holy Trinity Sunday here at St. John's Lutheran Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Good to have you together with us today for worship. A special word of welcome to those of you who are worshiping online here for the first time at St. John's. We join together with you and we share in this celebration of Christ and of God's grace in the world. So, a special word of welcome to you. A couple of key things happening today. From about 8.30 until 9.30 or 10 o'clock this morning, we have invited people from the congregation, all of you, if you are able and wish to do so, to come to the parking lot for a parking lot in your car Holy Communion service. We will consecrate the elements today at our worship service, and uh, you will receive those as you come through this morning. So uh, we are thankful for being able to share in Holy Communion in that way. Our, our plan and intention is to do that every first and third Sunday of the month through the summer. So watch your e-blasts and other uh, information from church here for that, uh, for, that kind of, uh, for that kind of information. But we'll look forward to sharing in Holy Communion with you today. Today is the Sunday of the Holy Trinity. It's always the Sunday that follows Pentecost and yet another celebration of God in all of God's fullness for us and for the whole creation. So, we invite you now to come together and to worship in the light and the love of Jesus Christ. Will you join me first as we confess our sins, ready and waiting to hear the promise of forgiveness through our Lord's grace. Dear friends, we worship as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Holy Scriptures tell us in 1 John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Will you please take a few moments now as a time for your own personal meditation and confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, who is given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now please join me as we pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one and three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's focus reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 31. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe in greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? 
but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, friends. I'm here at the cross um, in the back of our church today, and uh, I wanted um, to bring you here with me, so we're going to talk about worry. And um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 24 to 34, um, Jesus loved to tell the people about how God wanted them to live. And one of the things that um, was true many, many years ago when Jesus was teaching was people had worries. And today, um, that's no different. We have a lot of worries also. Um, let's talk about a few of those worries you may be having. You may be worrying about um, the end of school that, and how you did and, and grades. So we'll put school here on this rock. I'm going to put it right here at the foot of the cross. I'm going to put about things that you may have seen on the news lately that are scary. And there's so many things to be scared about. So I'm going to write scary. All the things that you've seen. And those are very much worth worrying about. Thank you. 
chapter 2 verses 4 through 21 but Peter standing with the eleven raised his voice and addressed them men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem let this not be known to you let this be known to you and listen to what I say indeed these are not drunk as you suppose for it's only nine o'clock in the morning no this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel in the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, 
Brianna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God, and God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. 
And God is the word made flesh. Our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
Dear friends, let us confess together our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Dear God, on this Trinity Sunday, we proclaim the mystery of our faith in the triune God, of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one in three and three in one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose fingers sculpt the sun and moon and curl the baby's ear, spirit brooding over the chaos before the naming of the day, Savior, sending us to the ends of the earth with water and word, startle us with your grace, love, and communion of your unity and diversity that we may live to praise your majestic name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, guide the hearts of the people here at St. John's. Give strength to all to rise up and share love. Heal the brokenhearted, including the families of Ernest Springer and Ellie Bergland. Comfort those who grieve and mourn over the, their lost loved one. We pray for our state that has witnessed the death of George Floyd and the pain and hurt of the people in response. Comfort those who grieve. Protect those who work on the front lines and give peace to those who have lost property, things that have been destroyed. Help each of us in our own hearts reject the evil of prejudices and racism. And lastly, God, we pray for our nation. With riots, turn them into peaceful protests. With COVID-19, heal the sick. For people who protect and serve, including police, firefighters, doctors, hospital nurses, EMTs, and volunteers, give them strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with your strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be instruments of justice and love in this world that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Today, here at St. John's, starting at 8.30 in the parking lot, you can receive communion in your car. And so in order to do that, we consecrate the elements of, of bread and wine. And um, so that's what I'm going to do now. So here are these familiar words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body, given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in remembrance of me. If you are wondering if you should come forward in your car, uh, the answer is yes. 
This is God's table, God's invitation, and we will meet you in the parking lot. There will be ushers to guide you through the process of where you go with your car starting at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, Pastor Andy and I will be there as well as this consecrated bread and wine. It is given for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. So let us pray. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever are yours. Amen. Okay. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will.